you have a restraining order against you? Are you seeking to get a restraining order against somebody else? My name is David Bruno. I'm a partner at the Bianchi Law Group. And I want to talk to you a little bit about what to expect at the trial, which is very different than what you may see on television. This is not a criminal case. This is a civil case. It's in the family part. It's before a single judge. When you go into court, the courtroom separated and they do everything in their powers to separate the plaintiffs and the defendants from each other, given the protections that are in effect because of the temporary restraining order. The judge will come out and go through the calendar, basically identifying each case, calling out the plaintiff and the defendant, asking how they wish to proceed. If the plaintiff or the defendant, they don't have counsel, well, they have to articulate their positions and what they want to do on their own. They don't have the appointment of counsel. There's some resources out there through certain nonprofits, but generally speaking, it's not like criminal where if you're indigent, you get appointed counsel. So mm -hmm. if an attorney is in the case, the attorney stands up with the party and articulates to the court how their client wishes to proceed. Now, sometimes that final restraining order hearing will happen that same day, not, not when we're involved, because we know what has to go into preparing for the final restraining order. Because we're a team of former prosecutors, we know what police reports and other discovery are available through subpoenas. That's critical because we do our due diligence. We get pre prepared. It's not just working with our client to get the evidence that they have in their possession like text messages and emails and phone records and photographs and videos and recordings. And the list goes on and on and on. But we also know that there's going to be a recording by the plaintiff when the plaintiff got the temporary restraining order. That was with a judge alleging what is the basis of the restraining order. We also know if police were notified, there may be a 911 call, there will be police reports, there may be witness statements. Police may take photographs and video, body cams, uh, surveillance video. So these are all things that needs to, need to happen, need to be looked at in preparing for a final restraining order. Because at the hearing, the rules of evidence apply and evidence needs to be presented according to the rules of evidence, where a foundation and the proponent of the evidence must authenticate the pieces of evidence. So it's critical to know the rules of evidence and how to move evidence in the procedure. If the case goes to the trial, then the plaintiff will go first. And the plaintiff or the plaintiff's attorney will call witnesses and present evidence to prove the case that they have to prove. For example, there's these predicate acts that have to be proven by preponderance of the evidence. That's the first question the court has to answer. Has a predicate act, one or more predicate acts been proven by preponderance of the evidence? And then if so, the second question the court has to answer is whether or not the restraining order is necessary for the protection of the plaintiff. That is the silver versus silver standard. So the plaintiff has to call witnesses and admit evidence uh, to prove the predicate acts by preponderance and that the restraining order is necessary. After the plaintiff presents their witnesses and their evidence, then the defendant goes. The defendant can testify. The defendant can admit evidence and exhibits, et cetera. And then after both sides have the opportunity to present evidence, the court will hear closing arguments. Plaintiff summarizing the evidence and why the restraining order is necessary and the defendant summarizing the evidence and it, um, presenting why the restraining order is not necessary. And then the court will make a final decision. If the final restraining order is granted, that is a protective order that is forever. Unlike some other states, New Jersey's Domestic Violence Act has the duration of final restraining orders to be indefinite and only could be removed or modified through a motion or a court action. So it's critical that the parties know exactly what to expect at trial and how to present evidence, how to present their witnesses and what the legal authority and precedent is. If you have a restraining order against you or you're trying to get a restraining order against somebody else, 
contact the Bianchi Law Group. Our team of former prosecutors are well-versed in this area. We have regular huddles, we call, on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, where we collectively talk about our cases together. That includes myself and my law partner, Bob Bianchi. The huddles are a great resource that we have that includes all of our attorneys and our support staff to dialogue, strategize, and work on our cases together. If you need help or you have any questions, give us a call, 862-210-8570. We'd be honored to handle your case.